Okay, sounds great. Okay. It's why to play and win, right? Yes, yes, of course. So basically, f4, king, b5, and black is able to catch the pawn, right? Yeah, so give me one second. I'm, I think I'm onto something. Sure, sure. Almost there. I don't know, man. Um, I understand that King B5, he's going to be in time to catch the pawn. So to stop that, I've thought about King D4. Okay. But the problem with that is that if I play that, wouldn't he just queen first on B1? And if he does so, then, you know, if I'm queening the next move, then that doesn't really do much for me. That's already a draw at that point. There's no way. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm queening second, so after he queens, he can do whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, so, here's the, like uh, this is where the counting actually takes place, you know. So once you play king d4, yeah. So on, only thing we have to consider is b5 now, because king, if if black replies this, we just reply this, and white will queen faster, yeah. Yeah. So with b5, uh, now basically it's a pawn race where you can see. We both are on the same rank, but uh, it's Black's turn right now. So here, if we keep pushing the pawns, obviously Black will queen first, and it pretty much makes no sense for us to like calculate that position because it will be Black's turn yeah, after queening. Oh, I got it now. I got it. Yeah? Yeah, you have to force the Black king to that diagonal so we queen with a check. So that you could that's what the trick is perfect so basically when the pawn gets to b3 we need to play king c3 exactly so this is this is where the counting starts you know so this till this position everything is fine so here you can count yeah that you are making one move with the king which pretty much makes sense right now because black cannot use he this. also has to make 
one. He also yeah. has to make the king move. And now we again put. So what happens is we queen with the check, and now all the other rules of the pawn race comes into action. So if black plays king a2, this is the position which I was talking about, we get a checkmate. Yeah. yeah. And if he plays king a4, then we win the queen with the cure, the next move. Yep. So basically, these are the, uh, the total number of rules are always this much in any pawn race. You have to pretty much figure out these things only. Mm, got it. Okay. Okay. Now there are there are of yeah. course some exceptions like there are some more advanced problems where you have to count it in a much uh, precise manner. Uh, I actually want to show that as an example right now. Uh, so okay. things are slightly slightly more difficult there. Basically, I would say. So just okay. let me just put it up. So this was this actually happened in one of my games. So it will be like a good practical example. That's so, okay. Yeah. So this this was a position. So you know when the rooks got exchanged, yeah, like this, and we got a position like this. So here you see you have to take into consideration a lot of various factors as well, because there are multiple pawns on the other side of the board. Other side of Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see both both the sides have pretty much uh, like some pawns to their advantage as well. Like for white, it's pretty clear, yeah, the d5 pawn. So yes. we cannot capture it. And because we cannot capture it, our king has to be stuck here for a long time. So that makes like, you know, slightly black's task more difficult yeah, in this situation. Mm-hmm. And white, on the other hand, also cannot do any progress because these pawns, even though they are separated, they usually take care of each other. Because if yes. you put them like this, you cannot capture this guy. Yeah? And the mm -hmm. moment you come to G2, black will push F4. And if you go here, black will push F3. So there is no way white can also capture any of the black pawns. Right. But the question is, how can we win this one? So that's, I mean, as as black, we have to try and win this. So is it possible to win this one? That's the main question here. So here, white played king e3. So black made slight progress. You can see, again, the same formation. Uh, this, this would have been anyway forced in some time. So I think it's okay. But this was white's defensive idea. So white just said that next few moves, I'm just going to keep my king f2, f3, f2, f3, and okay, just wait. And this is where black has to find some progress. And definitely this has to be a pawn race yeah, at some point. So let's have a look how black progressed first. So black played the move b5. This is actually the key part of the entire position you have to figure out the move b5. We'll try to also understand why this move is necessary. So king f3 and b4. So what exactly did black achieve? Yeah, just by keeping the pawns like from b6 to b4, he made some progress. So the, the answer is actually very deep that after the pawn race is over, both sides will queen at the same time. But if the pawn was on b6, then white would have captured the pawn. Hmm. Yeah. But now since it's on b4, there is that pawn is safe. So, I mean, I'm just saying this in a very superficial manner. We have to actually go a bit deep in the position. So let's then, like, let's now check the pawn race, yeah? So king f2, king e5, king f3, king f5, King F2, and this is the moment where black has to calculate the pawn race. So we have to count the moves right now. So one move with the king. Obviously, white will now not further waste time. He will push the pawn, yeah? Yes. So black, uh, white pushed the pawn. So one pawn move from white and another pawn move from black as well. So you can see right now the pawn race is between the H and the D pawn. So here yes. black is winning the pawn race, yeah, because black is one move faster. 
Right. Uh, white has to bring the king. Unfortunately, if you push this, uh, black queens first. And as I told you, we have to look for some queen trades right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I think somewhere here, there will be some sort of a queen trade. Even if there isn't any queen trade, the queen pawn ending looks pretty winning for black. So, for example, if we start with a check right now, let's just say if he goes here, now we can give a check and automatically you see yeah, the next move, the queens are getting traded. Yeah. And if he decides to come here, which is also fine, I'm going to give a check, force him to this square and now probably just pick up the pawn. Mm. And I am pretty sure that this queen pawn endgame is just winning for us. I mean, there are obviously multiple ways to win this. I think queen d3 is also another way of winning this position. But okay, let's just take this one as well. This this should be simply winning for us. Okay, makes sense. So he cannot uh, do this. He has to play king to g2. And now one move with his king and now another move with our king. So basically now the race will be between these two pawns. So he goes d7, okay. f3 check. So this check is like gaining an important tempo, yeah? Black, white has to move his king. And black right on time managed to reach this position. So here, d8 queen, f1 queen. Now, for any common player, this should look like white is white queen first. So this should be okay for white, right? But the problem is because we managed to move the pawn from b6 to b4, now white does not have that queen b6 move at his disposal. Yes. So he has and to the king is move. separated from the pawns. That's another and problem, the, right? Yeah, the biggest problem is white's king is way too much separated from the pawns. And black will eventually use his king and his queen uh, to capture both the pawns. Yeah. yeah. So in, in this position, uh, my initial calculation was actually queen e7. So this is what I thought my opponent will play. Uh, to which I planned king b4. Queen d6 check, king c3, queen c5, and king b3. So the advantage of the pawn from coming to b4, now this also falls. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in a regular game, I mean, of course, there are some queen pawn endgame knowledge here that you might use, but uh, you pretty much don't need to use it like a while you are calculating the king pawn in game, yeah, because this looks practically very comfortable for black to actually play and win the game, because white's king is completely on a wrong wrong position yeah, for this position. Mm. So this should be just straight away losing for white. Mm -hmm. I can actually check, but I'm pretty sure this should be yeah. So computer already sees some perpetual checks. I, I can say, but. This this should be winning for us for sure. I don't know what what exactly is the calculation and why we are not going for this position. So maybe some perpetual checks. That's that's the thing. But I'm pretty sure in a practical game, this position will be winning for black. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, yeah. it's actually very difficult to play this. I mean, okay, with with the computer, I think you can always find those particular checks, you know, which are necessary. But uh, right. for a normal player, I think this should be just lost. So yeah. this, this was my calculation uh, all throughout. So here, I think my opponent made a small mistake, uh, which made it even more easier for me. Uh, so I just played this and just you know put my queen here. So if, if we are further going into a king pawn endgame, I don't have to actually calculate the pawn race because I'm going to capture with the king here. Yeah? And mm. if you keep giving me checks, I will eventually find my way to C3 or C2. And okay, I will just win the B3 and C4 pawns. That's pretty much how it happened in the game. 
So you can see, I, I, I was avoiding the queen trade here yeah, all throughout, you can see. Like just before right. taking, I know that he will take and again, it is going to be a pawn race here. Yeah. I don't want to enter any pawn races anymore. So just trade and okay. No further checks as well. Yeah. And this is just completely winning. I mean, I can avoid the things and this is the final transition point. Yeah. Again, I'm going into a pawn race because the race will be between the C pawn and the B pawn. My pawn is much more advanced. Right. Makes so, sense. So he didn't capture and okay, now I'm also not going to capture. I will just because if I capture, you know, I'm advancing his, his pawn as well. Right. So I'm not going to capture and okay, he has no moves actually in this position. So eventually I think, yeah, well, another pawn trade situation and okay, this is just lost. But the, yeah. the trick is yeah. to actually visualize, yeah, because this all these would not have been possible, you know, if you if black did not find the idea of being yeah. people. So and without the, those two moves included, basically what would have happened is that white would have captured on b6. Yes. Uh, exactly. the... So so let, let's just see. Yeah? Same thing if we do uh, in this move order. So here you can see after captures, promote, promote. He captures on b6. Yeah, We don't have any checkmating nets yet and this this looks impossible for black to win it will be a draw black will force some perpetuals right now did you see the evaluation of engine evaluation from this position yeah it's a it's a draw um, okay i see so this this has no i mean we can be one so if I'm, I mean, if I'm to calculate this, I need to basically visualize the pawns queening and what the ending position might look like and try to push an ideal ending configuration of pieces after the queening happens. And just basically know that, just keep track of like anytime I make a king move, uh, you yes. know. Yeah. He has to also make a move or else I'm going to fall behind in the race, right? Yeah, if if you, so th that's exactly the thing. Uh, if you are making a king move, like ideally he should also make a king move. Right. And that was pretty much also like the whole idea of discounting thing, you know. If you are pushing your pawns, so you should just count when he's pushing his pawns as well. I think... I think in this position that we just solved right now, uh, this was also one of the variations. Um, sorry, this one. So in this position, yeah, like one of the most common mistakes uh, which a lot of people do is to play king a5 in this position. So here what happens is you can see you take and now black plays something like king g6 or king g4. And now in order to win this position, you need your pawn on a8 yeah, first. Yeah. But that's not going to happen, yeah, because your king is blocking the way. Yeah. So you will pretty much have to use the B pawn, and then the whole thing doesn't work, yeah. You cannot uh, control the diagonal. You will win the pawn race, like you will queen one move ahead, but you cannot do anything. So you cannot. Uh... Play mm -hmm. So. Okay, it's a queen pawn endgame, and this this pawn is not the best pawn yeah to play with. So basically, I would, yeah. Now I'm just trying to see if there's any way to force the queen trade and then win, but I think it's very difficult, right? Long yeah, now, process. Now, now we cannot force the trade because there are like uh, tr try to imagine yeah to uh, trade the queen, you must give a check like somewhere on b seven, right? But black will never ever take his king to g7. He will be somewhere on these space. Like you don't have a common square to attack the king and the queen both. Basically, and also that like the white king can't really hide from the checks from the black queen either, right? Like like if say a white plan to just push the a pawn, 
to try to win this. You're yeah. saying that white just won't have any hiding squares for the king? Yeah, exactly. Like you will you will hide, but there will be so something like this. You you can try and like hide some till till this moment, but there will be always some checks which will not let you uh well basically create a defensive construction. You you pretty much need the pawn on the other side of the king to make any progress. Gotcha. But with the pawn on the A file, it's not going to be possible. Got it. Okay. So that's that's the thing in this pawn pawn race. So we have to move our king right now. I mean, we have to push the pawn right now. So here you can see all the moves. So white is pushing his pawn, black is pushing his pawn. Yeah. So it's kind of like a drawn situation. But if yeah. we make a king move right now, we have to be very careful because black is one move ahead. So he queens first and he actually controls the square. Yeah. So this will be winning for black. So as long as uh, you are moving the king, you can see black is also moving the king. I mean, when we are going to a5. So this actually doesn't give us any advantage. But here, the point is, now we are moving the pawns. So basically, we are going forward and like further ahead towards the queening square. And black still doesn't have his pawn moves yeah, yet. Yes, so correct. That's why, that's why your variation with b4 now wins, because you pushed a pawn and he has to make a king move right now. So you are basically gaining one move in this situation. Mm -hmm. So you play this, and okay, now, now, now it's a pawn race. But you can see white, white is one move up, and the other tactical part also works in this position. Got it. Okay, so, so we will of course look at more more positions in this one. But uh, this this was the like I can say one of the toughest position, which also happened in my game where I had to actually figure out that b five idea, you know, because I'm. I mean, generally, we don't uh, see a lot of king pawn end games going into a queen pawn end game situation, yeah. But in the right. pawn race, that is a possibility, and we have to further evaluate that queen pawn end game, you know, which is arising. So this is not very common. I mean, I will say I might have got this like maybe a couple of times or maybe three times in my whole career so far, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but yeah, we need to calculate because you can see in this case, this was the situation, yeah? And you have to find this B5 because other than that, there are no winning chances for both. And yeah. the, the biggest problem is when, when we are um, checking such situations, so let's just say I'm checking it with the leeches. So you can see it's actually giving like minus two, yeah? But you see, he's not making any progress. He's just like shuffling around, you know, with his king. If you if you just look at the screen, you, you can see black has like so. I mean, he's just playing some moves, but no progress is being made. He's just moving around his king. The computer doesn't see this b5 move. Uh, I think the computer uh, evaluates this move as a draw, but I am yet to figure out why. It it wasn't actually seen, so I will just check actually this position. What exactly is the evaluation? Because I know in these kind of end games, computer computers can be wrong. So let's just see. Yeah? Queen e7, king d4, queen d6, queen c5. Okay, so here, here is the thing. So king b3 is a mistake. Queen f4, I have to play and then take this so that this check is avoided. So some, some small differences and black is winning. Hmm. So you, you would actually think, yeah, the computer should be able to spot B5, you know, before, like, from such a situation is there. But it's eventually getting to the B5, though, right? It's just not playing it right away? Um, I think, yes. So he's probably... Oh, I mean, it's showing it at minus 2.6, so it's going to make progress somehow. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, he will probably do it. I'm curious. Can you play out a couple of moves from the computer? I just want to see what. Why does he want to shuffle so much with the king? 
Okay, the computer is suggesting king e5, king f3, king f6, king f2, king f7, king f3, king e7, king f. So he's just like you know shuffling around, yeah. So there is there is no difference actually. So why does it do that if? So I'm, I'm just going to check when he suggests b5. So I think, no. yeah, now, now he's suggesting b5. But it really doesn't what? make any difference. I'm just curious, what is, what's the point of the shuffling around? Well, like From an engine's perspective, why does it do that? Uh, I think uh, the, I mean, the, the general rule says that uh, computers are not so good at end games. You know, this is the general theory. But I, I, I think this has something to do with the stockfish on leeches. I'm pretty sure if, if I, so just a second. If I actually go to my chess space right now, I think uh, my, I mean, this, this engine probably should catch it. So let's, let's just check. Okay, so Obviously, this says black is winning, so that means I'm pretty sure he has seen something. Yeah, and yeah, okay. So here you can see a yeah, computer is straight away going for b5. Mm. Wow, minus 11 versus minus 2.7. That's a huge evaluation difference. Yeah, I think here, here the computer pretty much saw everything till the end. Uh... Yeah, so he's not changing the evaluation. So king e4 is the again uh, the top choice, I guess. Okay, computer says king e5. Okay, it's the same thing basically. So yeah, minus eleven versus minus two. Yeah. Yeah. So here queen e7, king d4. Queen d6, and I think that queen f4 check is pretty necessary in this position. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. so there are a lot of lot of winning moves, but queen f4 makes sense because I think uh, there are no further checks here for white. So black will capture this. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's winning for black, so... Okay, end games and computer analysis uh, are always debatable, you know. But you can see if you use the stronger platform, the computer anyway finds everything. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I think Crafty for today we can probably wrap up. Okay. And uh, well, let me know when is the 